differential susceptibility to media effects model. A long name, and there have been different versions of it. And I show you one version here from the Journal of Communication, published uh, you know, not, not, not so long ago, in the, here in the 2000s. But th there's been versions, as I said, since the 1940s, since Tom and Jerry, about that, that we know very well that media effects are not blanket uniform on everybody. They are susceptible to, to who you are and where you come from, and that has some, some differential logic. So that's what this model says. I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. First, you are somebody. So you have different susceptibility of who you are. Dispositional, developmental, you might be young, you might be old, you might be more mature, you might be more mature in some things and less mature in other things. So that depends on who you are and that makes you susceptible. Some people are get really crazy about soccer. <laughs> I don't know, but you know, you have different maturities in different fields and in others you don't. Or social dispositions you also have. So that's the first proposition. We, we are all different. And then second, that there are three media responses. Then you have the media use, and that leads to a response. And the response can be cognitive, emotional, or excitative. So you can get excited. And that then eventually has the media effect. Now, what the model says is that actually who you are, your disposition, has an effect on, on the response in two ways. First, they act as predictors. So who you are affects what media you will use. So if you're a child, you're more drawn to, you know, cartoon images. When you really like them, you don't really want to watch that stuff with the real people. And as older you get, you find yourself watching lectures online. <laughs> who would have thought, you know? So uh, yeah, so who you are and where you are developmental in that stage, but also dispositional and social affects what media you choose. And then also it has a moderation effect. It has a moderator effect that media you pursue, who you are affects the response that you get from, right? So two people can watch the same, you know, the same media content, but get completely different things out of it. One might say like, well, that's very upsetting. And the other person might say, well, that's really uplifting because they compare you with somebody. Somebody might say that's an inspiration and the other person gets envious. So who you are also affects then what response states you have. In this case, an emotional response states could be a cognitive response state or an excited response states. And then that leads to the media effect. Now the media effect has a feedback loop that affects all of these previous things. And so once you use the media, that media then will also influence who you are or who you become. Now, if you watch documentaries for a year or if you watch, you know, violent cartoon superheroes for a year, that might have effect. It might also have an effect on what media that has an effect on who you become down here might affect what media you use, you use next. And actually the media, uh, the recommender algorithm is the incarnation of that, right? The, autoplay next. And it has an effect on your cognitive emotional response. So if you only watch dramas, your emotional response, if you only talk, watch documentaries, your cognitive response might be more stimulated. So these are the four different propositions. It's not one, it's not a silver bullet. This happens and this will be the effect for people. Tom and Jerry makes children aggressive. No, absolutely not. But it's also not a hundred different effects. It's like, okay, we have four. And that's a very old model. So we know that for a long time. Let me walk you through one application to make it a little bit more clear. So let's imagine there are people with social anxiety. Now, people with social anxiety are more prone to go to online dating. Guess why? Because for them, it's really uncomfortable to be in a bar and to get to know other people or in another not just social setting. So they are more prone to go to online dating. Great. Now, this is also a moderative effect because another characteristics of who you are might be you might be very lonely. So then the online dating has a moderation effect with your loneliness, loneliness as to who you are, maybe an introvert, and that then leads to your response. And the response in that case, in that study, they found well, it's compulsive use. So it's a pretty toxic cocktail. Social anxiety, the online dating, and then combined with the loneliness, the loneliness moderates that effect, which then leads to the media effect, the final effect. Now, what's the final effect of compulsive, addictive, use, that's well, probably negative effects on your schoolwork, on your social environment, on your professional work, on your performance. I mean, if you're addicted to something, in that case, it might be online dating, things in the rest of your life might do not go so well. So now, what do you think happens when things in the rest of your life don't go so well? Well, it will have a feedback loop back to 
But guess what? First of all, to your social anxiety. Because <laughs> if you go to your workplace and things don't go so well, guess how your social anxiety and how your loneliness will de be developed? Well, it becomes a vicious circle. Right? It also has then an effect on your media interaction and of your compulsive use. You might use it more and more and more. So this is an example of this differential susceptibility to media effects. So, and that is very important. And that is something that probably the digital paradigm and social media has underestimated, but that in the communication literature is, is very clear and has been very clear for, as I said, almost 100 years that we are not all equally susceptible.